Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Blau. I'm a hematologist. I have a form of blood cancer called multiple myeloma, and I started a company called All for Cure that aims to help other myeloma patients navigate some of the issues that I've experienced as a patient and which I see other patients uh, going through, uh, th uh, among the 500 patients with myeloma that currently participate in All for Cure. Uh, and and uh, today I'm going to talk about um, an, uh, an issue that I uh, pay a lot of attention to related to infections, trying to avoid infections, and then when I get them, uh, my approach to treating them. Uh, and, uh, but none of the information that's contained in this video should be regarded as medical advice. Rely on your own oncologist uh, for that. Uh, but uh, to start off, I'll just uh, remind people who may have seen a, my previous video <clears throat> of uh, my course uh, as a myeloma patient reflected here in my All for Cure dashboard, where we have all of my treatments, um, uh, and then labs that indicate whether those treatments are working or not. I'm going to focus in on uh, uh, a specific episode that I experienced of influenza, and these are labs that correlate with uh, my uh, influenza uh, treatment uh, uh, back uh, after my second stem cell transplant, my allogeneic stem cell transplant. Uh, and if we look across all of the patients uh, that are in All for Cure, there are really two major types of issues that patients have to, uh, I think, be mindful of and think carefully about. <clears throat> uh, the first is shown and the dashboard uh, of this patient who uh, uh, ended up uh, having, uh, this, is, this is a marker of the patient's tumor uh, that responded to initial treatment. This is a lovely person, by the way, that is a very close friend uh, of this gentleman, uh, uh, responded to initial treatment. Uh, this, the tumor marker uh, kappa-free light chains uh, went up uh, and then uh, resulting in a change of treatment. Uh, and this pattern of, uh, of a compressed succession uh, of uh, periods of relapse is uh, very common in patients who develop multiply recurrent relapsed myeloma. Uh, and you can see here with each recurrence, there's a change in treatment. Each new treatment works less and less well. Uh, until he uh, eventually uh, died, uh, uh, very sadly, very unfortunately, uh, uh, now um, uh, about a year and a half ago, a little bit longer than that. So that's one problem that I, you know, I'm super thoughtful about. I try to, as, as I've mentioned in a previous uh, video, try to maintain this initial remission for as long as possible by being very aggressive in my maintenance therapy, and I've described that previously. Uh, the other problem, though, that uh, I try to be mindful of that can be that can be a, a real disaster for myeloma patients is reflected in the dashboard of this patient, where <clears throat> uh, he did uh, uh, w respond to initial treatment. This is uh, a patient who had elevated lambda-free light chains. Uh, got a stem cell transplant and was on a continuous uh, maintenance therapy following his second st uh, following his uh, autologous stem cell transplant, but he also very sadly died, uh, and this was from an infection. And so, even though his myeloma was under great control, uh, uh, he, like many patients with multiple myeloma, experienced very serious infections that can be life-threatening. And it's very sadly, uh, in this uh, other very close friend of mine, uh, uh, resulted in his death. Uh, and so the, the way that I uh, th think about my myeloma is trying to be super aggressive in treating the myeloma, but then also incredibly thoughtful and deliberate in my uh, efforts to uh, avoid infections and if I get infections, being very proactive in how they're handled. <clears throat> uh, and so uh, getting back to my uh, episode of uh, influenza, I ended up on a drug that's commonly used for patients with influenza called Tamiflu. And the uh, typical package insert for Tamiflu 
would have, you know, I'm an adult, so I would uh, uh, get 75 milligrams twice daily for five days is a typical course for Tamiflu. But in my case, uh, that was not nearly adequate to treat my influenza. And I had a form of influenza called influenza B. Uh, and my course is kind of honed in. So this is a uh, derivative of my all for cure dashboard that really dials in what happened around the treatment of my uh, influenza B. <clears throat> and so this was, again, just, I think, 10 days after my allogeneic stem cell transplant. I had uh, flu-like symptoms. I think I ended up in the hospital during this period of time. Uh, but uh, so I was diagnosed April 1st of 2016 with influenza B. I started Tamiflu at the usual dose uh, uh, of 75 milligrams twice a day. Uh, and my influenza titers 14 days later fell. So the amount of influenza in my body was declining, but um, uh, it hadn't gone away. And so for that reason, my doctor increased uh, my Tamiflu dose to 150 milligrams twice daily. And, uh, and then uh, in another test that isn't shown here, it looked like after a month of this higher dose of Tamiflu or six weeks of total Tamiflu therapy, that uh, my, uh, my uh, influenza B had disappeared. And I'm not showing that test result here, but that was a conclusion. And so I was off Tamiflu for about 11 days, uh, but then I started to feel ill again. And I, got, uh, and I got another test and my influenza B had come back. So, I, so even though the test suggested that it had been treated effectively, it had fallen below the limits of detection and now was coming back. And so we resumed Tamiflu 150 milligrams uh, twice daily and I stayed on it for the next month uh, until my uh, influenza B stayed away for good. And so the, uh, the point here is to not just follow a package insert uh, of a five-day treatment of Tamiflu and think that in a patient with a, com a compromised immune system which is characteristic of every patient with multiple myeloma, don't just hang your hat on the premise that that five-day treatment will do what you need it to do. Patients with myeloma oftentimes will need much longer courses of treatment. We actually have a patient enrolled in All for Cure uh, who I think uh, uh, probably uh, ended up taking Tamiflu for too short a period of time uh, and, and then uh, got much sicker uh, in the days after stopping Tamiflu and, and very sadly died after that. So I think being very thoughtful about making sure that drugs, when they are used, antiviral drugs, that they're used long enough and at sufficiently high doses to have the desired effect to uh, prove that the virus now is no longer present. And if you're feeling sick in the days after stopping the drug, be mindful of the fact that you, you could have a resurgence of that virus. And so, the, and so in the next slide, I just wanted to show some general measures that I take to try to minimize infections. Uh, I don't know that these are, are necessarily, uh, this isn't, I, I know this isn't a comprehensive list. I know other people uh, do things in addition to this, but these are some, I think, reasonably common sense measures that I've taken in my own care. So. Uh, you know, first thing is uh, pretty obvious, stay away from sick people. I'm super attentive now to someone coughing or sneezing in proximity around me, and I'll take many steps away from people who are obviously ill. Uh, I'm a big fan of hand sanitizer. Uh, I use this a lot because you can get sick. Of course, you get colds, not only by being in proximity to somebody that's sneezing, but also, uh, when, uh, when, if I have a cold and I sneeze and, and I get, you know, um, uh, you know, I use my hands to, to prevent a sneeze or a cough, I'll end up having some virus on my hands and then something that I touch will, will still have the virus there. Now, if I, as a patient, come and I touch the same area and now rub my nose or mouth, I can easily pick up a viral infection that way. So I think being very careful about what I touch in public places 
and then frequently using hand sanitizer is important for me. Um, I'm a big fan of masks uh, that I wear now in airplanes routinely uh, because you only need one sick peop uh, person in the plane and recy uh, recycled air uh, to end up getting sick. And, and the cost to me of getting a cold is often two or three weeks of really feeling poorly unlike you know uh, someone else in my family my daughter who will get you know cold and she's better in a couple of days knocks me out for a long time so I'm heavily incentivized to avoid colds uh, I do take an antiviral pill once a day valacyclovir to prevent shingles and that's worked well for me and then uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of antibiotics if I'm feeling ill if I'm if I'm getting a fever chills sinus drainage, cough, uh, I get that evaluated like now and I start antibiotics promptly if there's any concern at all about the possibility of a bacterial infection. This isn't an exhaustive list of anti-infective measures that patients uh, take or that all doctors use, but this is what I do and it seems to be working for me. So uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, please post your comments in the comments section please subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and please like our Facebook page. Uh, and if you have myeloma, uh, uh, we'd be very happy to have you as a, another participant in All for Cure. Thank you.